Hello, Chip GT here. And in this video, we are going to be looking at cleaning up the backside of the interior of this cabinet, cleaning it up, getting it prepared and prepped and creating a base spot for a PC. We're going to move the audio amplifiers that are on the back panel to the front corner. We're gonna add a a power interrupt switch so that when the coin door opens it triggers a string of lights so that we can actually see inside of here without opening anything up from here on out so with that said we've got a lot to do so let's go ahead and coin in and push that start button all right so here's the back panel or the back door that allows me to slide the monitor out up there. This is actually a really thin piece of wood. And when you transport a pinball cabinet, you typically set it up on its, on its backside. So I need to thicken this up. I need to put a brace on the inside here. But before I do that, um, these audio amps, when I first installed them, I thought, you know what, I'm never gonna put a computer in here. Let's put these in back. I'll set it, forget it, don't worry about it. Now I've come to realize that I need to have these a little bit closer because we have the issue with the subwoofer vibrating the accelerometer and almost every table needs to be adjusted up or down in pinball or there needs to be a little bit of tweaking so that I can get each table adjusted appropriately and as I add more tables this will happen even more. So with that said, I think it's time that these get moved to a little bit closer position up closer to the coin door and one of the first things that I did for this episode that I did not record was I made a mount using my 3d printer so here it is and uh, these are the buttons that I had on the front of my cabinet before these are going to be used um, for other things like a shift key but this mount will actually be where I store the audio amps and uh, we'll hook all that up and get it going okay so here's the audio amps in the mount and I'm thinking about putting it right here and uh, we'll have to rearrange some audio cables and things like that but that's kind of where I'm thinking there so I can just come in from here and adjust as needed now this spot up here on the top of that is going to be reserved for a microcontroller that is going to use um, power some lights and control some lights so that when I open the coin door, lights turn on with 5 volt power. So that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so I went ahead and I re-ran all the wiring for the two audio amps. So the upper one is going to be my front speakers, the lower one is my rear speakers. I went ahead and wired up the three buttons there because they needed power and they needed to actually be hooked up to the um, ultimate board. And then I wired up, this is an Adafruit Circuit Playground Express. And it is hooked up to some remaining lights that I had um, on the back of my cabinet originally. So those were left over. And what's cool about this is I also put in an interrupt switch over here off to the side. So this is just a leftover button and I 3D printed a, uh, a chassis for it and it, uh, it's being pushed down by the door right now when it's in the closed position. So when the door opens, I'll open it and the lights get lit and then this Adafruit controller is actually controlling these lights being powered because those are RGBs. So I just wrote a simple code uh, that says, you know, if true, light all LEDs to white. Adafruit does a very good job of explaining how the Circuit Playground Express works. Their website is very easy and uh, you know what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting um, Circuit Python code onto this and uh, the first thing you need to do is install Mu. So you just come over here, click and download and install Mu. There's a little bit of a setup here. If you just follow their guide, you'll be fine. Um, there is a micro USB port right here and uh, when you plug it into your computer for the first time it should pop up and say hey this is a drive or this is a device um, 
if you find out that it does not do that, it is not that the board is bad, it's probably the cable. Most micro USB cords in the past were used for power and providing power to like cell phones and things like that. So it could be that that cord that you have just doesn't have the data line that comes into this board. So if you swap out that cable, that'll fix your problem almost 100% of the time download the latest i wouldn't call these drivers this is more like the um the latest release of software for the chipset so you'll just click on uh, download the file here and then with it plugged into your computer you'll double press the reset button and you're just going to copy that this file onto the drive that pops up it'll reboot and then what you should see is this. I have provided a link for you to Adafruit's library builds and bundles. You'll just click right here on the 7.x and it'll download this giant folder and right there. So here I'll go back. So it'll come zipped. You just unzip it, save it to your desktop, whatever, wherever you want to put it. And uh, we'll go, I'll have that up as well. And you'll just double click on library and we're gonna scroll all the way down to the very bottom. And there's the NeoPixel library that we want. Open up your library folder on the, on the uh, circuit Playground Express. You're just gonna copy, drag and drop. Then we'll open up Mew. And I want to explain how I've got this set up a little bit. So this is the layout that I'm using. So I'm going straight from the power supply. So this is the ground coming in to the ground port here. And then I have power coming down to the switch. And this is the ground of the switch. The top is always the ground. And then you have a, this is the, when you push the button in, it'll trigger. And then this one is if the button is open. So if the button is not being pushed, trigger something. So we want to have it set up so that when the button is open, it triggers something. So instead of hooking it up to here, like we did for all the switches and everything for the pinball cabinet, we're actually setting it up to right here. This is called an open switch. Then from there, it goes up to the circuit playground and then the circuit playground has five volts come out to the strip this port right here a one is what we're using to push out to the lights this so dn that's your data in so we're going for a1 to data in and then i'm using a separate ground you could use this ground if you wanted to you could use any of the grounds it doesn't matter but i just use that ground to come down into that light now how do we program that well we import the time we import the board. This is the instructions for the board. This is instructions for time. And then this is the instructions for the NeoPixel. So we're importing those libraries. The board and the time are already on the board. You just have to say use them. And then I've made it kind of simple for you in case you are not using a circuit playground. If you want to use a different um, board that Adafruit has that's cheaper, you can. So what we're doing is we're just calling out that the pixel pin is going to be board.a1. The number of pixels, I have 30 on my strip, you'll change that to whatever. And then the order of the NeoPixels, because we're using the smart RGB LEDs, they are actually GRB, just like everything else in the cabinet. So the order is NeoPixel.RGB. And this tells, this is actually calling into the NeoPixel library and saying, get this order. This is the way that this chip works. Then we're gonna say, this is the pixel strip. So this is every, all the information that the board needs to know about the pixels. So we're just saying neopixel.neopixel and make sure that it's case sensitive. And then we're calling the neopixel pin, which is board.a.1, then comma, space, number of pixels right here, which equals 30 then space, and then this is the brightness level. You can go anywhere from 0 0.01 to one. One is like the brightest, so I'm just doing half brightness. I want auto write to be false because I don't want it to write until we're ready. And then another space, and then we have the pixel order equals order right there. So that strip gives the board all the instructions for the NeoPixel strip that we're using or the smart RGB strip. 
And now we're gonna write our code. This is while true, this is the loop we're gonna use that will run constantly and forever, all right? So we're saying all the pixels, I want them to fill every pixel. So R, G, and B. So this is, this would be red, green, blue and 255 is the maximum setting you can set for each color and zero is the minimum number that you can set for each color and that think of this as like brightness or intensity and by changing these you can get different color values all right so we want it to be white so you go 255 255 255 all right once you say this is the color i want to use now we're going to say turn them on so pixels dot show and then we're gonna say, I want you to sleep for one second, which means one millisecond, I want you to refresh and, and do the loop all over again. Now, some of you may think, well, that means it's gonna blink. Well, no, not really. It's just, it, this, this code is happening so fast, you're not gonna see it blink. It's just gonna always be on. Once this is done, all you're gonna do is click save and where you save it to, um, you save it right to the board. So right there, there's the code.py. Here's code.py right there. All right. So we're going to save, save that to the board. And make sure you have your library there. And then as long as it gets power, this circuit, the circuit is going to turn on and do what you want it to do just do this i could just open and shut this door all day long that power button that button interrupt down there boom lights off open that is such a cool little feature now in real pinball machines what that switch does is disable high power but it's not like a push button so i had to jury rig a solution here this is not normally what's used in the real world but for a jury rig solution, that's not bad. Then these buttons, um, one of them is gonna be a switch right there. When that's pushed in, that will change and go into a shifted mode where my outer buttons will do different things. Um, this red one is gonna be for night mode. Night mode will turn, a, turn off or disable all of the solenoids so that they're not firing and then this one is a all mute button for the audio so when i push this it's just going to mute all the audio so that way when i'm playing i can just open the door and pause and then talk so that's what those buttons are going to do now the amps are all wired up however now that i have a light in here you might be able to see my issue in the back here a little bit better there are Power breaks out the yin yang. And then off to the side, there's power breaks out the yin yang there. So my power strip that I have here only has three ports open. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six different power supplies. Um, this power supply down here is a 110 watt power supply and that's powering everything for DOF. So all the solenoids are being powered by that. Um, it's the shaker motors being powered by that. And even though 110 watts is not what's needed to power all these all at the same time, I'm gonna pretend like everything for that is gonna be 110 because I'm gonna have a CSD expansion board in the future. I'm gonna have, I've installed my chimes, but there's no solenoids in there right now. They're just there holding the spot. And then we'll put a bell somewhere over here. All right, so here's the power supply I got. It's a uh, Alatov. It, uh, this one does 12 volts, 360 watts, which should power everything that I want it to power. And what's nice is that this power supply actually has a, um, an overcurrent protection circuit and it has a short circuit protection surge protection and uh, an output over voltage protection so this unit comes with a lot of the standard features it's on I got this one from Amazon on Prime Day and got it for fairly cheap so let's go ahead and install this guy
All right, so real quick, I wanted to talk about the plan for this power supply. So it does 12 volts, it does 30 amps. You multiply 12 volts by 30 amps, you get 360 watts, okay? That is the max rating for this power supply. We want to apply the 80% rule. So you multiply this by 0.8 and that really gives us 288 watts of actual usable power before we get into the danger zone of maybe over drawing from this power supply. So like I said before, the main CSD board, we're just gonna assume that it's 110. I reached out to CSD and they said, you know, you are probably gonna be fine with adding one extra uh, 36 watt um, audio amplifier and you wouldn't have to worry about it. But if you add any more than that, then you probably have to worry about it. So I'm kind of taking with what he said with a grain of salt because I also want to get an expansion board, the chimes, the bells and a knocker. So I'm just going to assume that that 110 will cover everything for the CSD board. All right. Now, with that said, the IPAC Ultimate Controller draws a tiny little bit of power. And then those 12 buttons that I set up for the RGB LEDs are gonna have a power draw as well because that's what's powering that. And that is the calculation I came up with based off of the online information for that. And then for the SSF feedback, we have two separate audio amps at three amps and 12 volts which for 36. And then we have the music and call out audio amp at 36. And then lastly, we have the spooky monitor at 60. So if we take those 36 plus the 60, it's actually 168 total watts. So I really don't want to push it. So if you take that 110 and the 168, it kind of comes out to be like 279, which has like eight watts left over. So this thing is almost going to be at its max power draw using the 80% rule when we have everything else hooked up. Now, I don't know if I'm going to have anything else hooked up in the future, but this gives me some wiggle room if I need to uh, for extra lights or whatever else I might want to do. But this is the plan for that. Now, this power supply has a little bit different um, layout on the back so let's, i'll show you that now this is what this power supply looks like so you have ground neutral live and then you have three ports for negative three ports for positive and what we're going to try to do because this is 360 we're going to try to do 120 um, on each bus so that way it's a little more evenly spread so now we're going to install this thing we're just going to put it down in here all right, now that I got the light in there, we can actually see what I'm doing. I'm gonna go ahead and start removing the power couplings. Important safety tip, when you're going to remove any of these cords, make sure you have the power supply unplugged and it is not receiving any power. That goes for plugging in the cords in the future and it also goes for when you're removing them. For the new power supply, I went to the store and picked up some more number six bolts. And I picked up these elbow brackets. These are just your standard three quarter of an inch elbow brackets. And we're gonna mount those to the side. And then I picked up some clips because we're gonna have to make a couple of new wires. That way we can make this really easy for the new power supply. All right, so the power supply has some mounting holes down here on the bottom. It's not like the old one where you could just put power through it. So we're gonna use these elbow clips and then those number six bolts will thread right down into there and make give us a mounting surface. Kind of like that. So I'll install all of those and we'll be right back. this power supply is just a little bit bigger but I don't think that this will cause a problem with the uh, power or anything I think that this is going to be fine um, with, with how everything is laid out and if there is an issue then we'll have to just make some extensions or uh, think about how we're going to fix it 
So with that, I'm gonna mount this in here using the bolts that came with the clips because these have some threads and they're a little more self-tapping here. And that'll tap right down into that plastic. Okay, so we do need a little bit of an extension because the wires were pre-cut to come over here for the other one. Now they've got to come over here. So I went ahead and I cut wires. This, this is for the high power on the flippers and then this one goes to another high power device. And then this one goes to power the board, the whole circuit board down here. So what I did is I made a three-way Y harness here and then to hook up these little clips, it's fairly simple. You just run them through the hole like that. And then you crimp them with a pair of pliers. So we'll get them in there. And what I, what I like to do is I like to push it so that there's a little bit of wire coming through. And then you grab your needle nose pliers and then using the back end of the needle nose pliers, really try to squish it down that because you want you want it to make you want to make it so that there's no way that those are coming out and we'll just squish squish so it's a nice tight friction fit and those won't come off now these are ready to go in right on top of the other wires that are down there. The wires that I put in, those go to power these uh, solenoid boards. So like this, this board right here, and there's one in the back. I'm going to um, cut these down to the length that they need to be, install this piece. I'm gonna do it off camera so that you don't have to watch me waste your time. I went ahead and rerouted all the lines, all the power and everything from the back. I ended up taking these four power bricks snipping their tips and making several extensions. And uh, we're gonna plug those four, which are now here and here, into this power supply. So we'll have, um, instead of doing 120 and 120 on uh, the, the different buses here, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do um, 35, 35 on one, and then 35 and 50 on the other. So that means two two each and I, that gives me some wiggle room if I want to plug more things in I can. I know that the power is going to get up to the devices so I'm going to actually unplug the ports on the back of Spooky and the audio amp up top and then we'll turn on these audio amps. I'm going to plug this in now. Plug that in power there. We should get, be getting power here to this board if it was plugged in. And now we will test these audio amps. Yep, there's power. There's power. So the lights came on, powered just fine. So I went ahead and I plugged that audio amp in. It's got power. And then finally, the spooky monitor. And it is turning on just fine. So, what did this accomplish? Well, over here on the right, right behind the chime array that is not hooked up, um, is a power brick. That just freed up four ports. By doing this and plugging it into that power supply, I have freed up four ports on that power strip which in all reality, I didn't have four ports to begin with. I had like two extra. So now I'm not running extra power down through the cabinet. All devices are now being powered from inside the cabinet. I went ahead and rerouted the power. You can see the lines. There's, there's speaker lines on the, on the back wall there, and they go all the way across to the corner, down and around. And what that did is it made a nice big open bay spot right there for us to put the computer. So this has now cleaned out that whole back bay for us to place an internal computer. Now, some of those wires that are back there that are bundled up, that is the audio. That's that 15 foot cable for the audio speakers that I got before because I didn't plan on having a computer installed. And then one of the PCs that I was looking at doesn't have 
7.1 audio surround sound. So I went ahead and I put mounted my 7.1 audio surround sound puck back there. The next thing we have to think about is what computer we're gonna buy. So our next video will be talking about that. We're gonna have to also address cooling for how we're gonna get cooling through here, how we're gonna get cooling to go through the back side of the cabinet and then up to cool the parts that are in the back box. So we still have a long ways to go. We still have several more things to do, but we're getting closer. We're inching closer and closer every video. That wraps up this video. We still have a long way to go to get this thing prepared for Pincinnati. So if you found this video entertaining, if you learned something, please give me a like, please subscribe, tell your friends, share it with the community. That really does help make the channel grow. Um, thank you everyone for watching. I'll see you in the next one.